Welcome to Public Affairs. We will be interviewing Consul General Leo Herrera Monserrate Lim, direct and live from the Philippine Consulate General Office, Los Angeles, California. Thank you so much for your time, Consul General. Thank you also, Ali, uh, for giving us this uh, opportunity to, to reach some of your listeners. Yes. Well, topmost uh, on the program is about the Philippine presidential elections 2016. Would you kindly give us an update, especially for the overseas voters? Well, well thanks for the question, uh, Ali. I think uh, every Filipino right now, their, their main focus is the elections wherever they are, uh, whether they're inside the country or uh, in one of the uh, overseas uh, areas where Filipinos can be found. Uh, and I think there's a bit of eagerness to choose the next set of leaders. The, the current elections is a national elections for those who are overseas. They're choosing for president, vice president, and 12 senators and one party list members. It's a bit more complicated for those voting inside the, inside the Philippines because there's also choosing for congressmen and uh, local government officials. So in one, in one city, they can probably have to uh, choose around 40 sets of names. Outside the country, it's it's only for around 15, 15 sets of names for, for this election. Uh, so far, uh, here in LA, the, the voting has uh, gradually increased. We started the process about three weeks ago, and uh, many Filipinos started to come into the consulate during the last few days, uh, voting personally and or mailing their, their ballots. We expect the, the more of our people to to try to beat the deadline before um, May 9 in terms of casting their ballots. Mm -hmm. And um, would you say, Consul General, that those who are registered voters will be voting? Or have you received yeah, word uh, that some others did not receive their ballots? Uh, well, uh, those who've either uh, said that they've not received their ballots, we've tried to verify whether we've mailed it to them or whether it's just in transit. Uh, but so far, we've, we've not heard of somebody who's uh, wanting to vote has not received the ballot, and uh, some of some of our people have just uh, decided to go to the consulate and uh, vote. Oh, uh huh. You just answered my question. I was just wondering whether if they received their ballot and were not able to mail it, can they just deliver it personally? Yes, and uh, well, they have first to check uh, the website whether their name is in the in the list of those registered. And then once their name is there, we, we, can, we can arrange that they get a ballot for people. Mm -hmm. Please give the exact date when people can go personally to the Consulate General Office to vote. And uh, okay. when and up to what time will it be held? Okay, we're, we're open every day, even Saturdays and Sundays, just for voting uh, from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. We close the voting uh, on May 9, 2 a.m. So modeling it's uh, early dawn because we have to coincide the closure of the voting with the closure in, in uh, the Philippines. Uh, so that's for personal voting. They have to be within the premises of the consulate by May 9, 2 a.m. to be able to vote. But I suggest they don't wait for the last, last minute. They can vote in the next few days personally by walking into the consulate. For those mailing, we, we suggest that they mail their ballots either today or tomorrow, and choose the next day mail option so that their vote can reach the consulate before May 9, because the reckoning period is the date of May 9, 2 a.m., the time the receipt of the consulate, not the, not the post date of the uh, ballot, but the consulate has to receive their ballot before May 9, 2 a.m., Mm -hmm. And a special instruction, especially for those who have not voted, and this will be their first time. Is this an automated election? In other words, you provide all the materials and even the pen? Yes. Uh, for those uh, coming into the consulate, we have the marking pens. Uh, they, they just shade the, the left side portion of the candidate they choose, and then they feed the, the ballot into the reader that then they get a receipt after that, just to ensure that uh, the people they chose appear on the 
the receipt and then they drop that receipt into a special receptacle uh, just for verification uh, purposes. So it, it's pretty much uh, during the past few days incident free we may deal with them dra no dramas in the in the personal voting uh, process people were very much satisfied in the efficiency mm -hmm. the by the way consul general uh, are people who are dual citizens able to vote yes uh, those who are dual citizens and registered to vote we, we closed the registration october of last year mm -hmm. so those who are registered dual citizens uh, they can vote as a little bit of a concern that we had received with regards to the hacking of the data system. Is that correct, the database for all those registered voters? Well, we, we also saw that uh, news on the, 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 the Comelec website uh, has been hacked and uh, some of the personal information of uh, voters have been compromised. But um, in a way, that hasn't affected overseas uh, voting. Because uh, we, we've not seen like uh, the potential fraud of uh, two persons claiming just just one one ballot or another person impersonating a registered voter. We've not seen that phenomenon uh, here in Los Angeles nor in other uh, consulates across the U.S. In other words, when they go to the consul general office personally, you check their ID and other. Um... We, um, yes, identity uh, cards. Absolutely, uh, we, we verify their identity, and uh, I think uh, it's also a tribute to to our Kababayans here in the U.S. They tend to be like uh, forthright in this whole process. They want to guard the, the whole process themselves. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, uh, through the years that we had uh, done an interviews about uh, overseas voting, the numbers have really increased. What would be the estimate for this year for overseas voters? Well, initially we 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 we, well, we had a good uh, uh, response in terms of our drive to register a lot of voters. In fact, Los Angeles was one of the highest globally, and uh, the highest in the U.S. Uh, we were able to both the stock and the uh, new voters able to register around fifty-four thousand uh, voters for for the Los Angeles area, meaning uh, those who came from the southern. California, Southern Nevada, New Mexico, Arizona, and Texas. But uh, we're still awaiting whether those who've registered will actually uh, come forward and vote. Uh, the experience during prior years is uh, pretty much around 16% to 18% voter turnout. Mm -hmm. And finally, Consul General, when would we know the results of these elections? Uh, from this, uh, we we have six precincts in our in our jurisdiction, meaning uh, the the aggregation of the votes. Uh, I think we will be prepared to to release the the results uh, by mid by midday of uh, May nine uh, Pacific time. But in terms of the aggregate, uh, it's Washington D.C. that compiles all the voting uh, across the U.S., and I think they're targeting uh, to release it be before uh, the end of the day or before uh, midnight of uh, May 9th. Mm -hmm. And finally, to know the result of the presidential elections uh, in the Philippines would be when? In the Philippines? Uh, I'm not sure whether Comelec has uh, set a timeline, uh, and uh, I might not be in a position to to put uh, Comelec in a, in a bind in terms of, the, of forecasting uh, when the results would come out. Mm -hmm. But it would be, uh, I think, ultimately faster than uh, prior presidential uh, elections in terms of release because uh, the counting has been automated and uh, this is not the first time, particularly in the Philippines, that they'll have automated counting. In the foreign service or overseas, it's the first time that they'll have automated counting. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Consul General.